Welcome everybody this week in America. Thank you for sharing some time with us today. Robert Maxim's Legacy Series has earned international acclaim as he highlights life's true virtues and purpose. A frequent guest at book fairs, conventions, as well as a go-to media resource, Robert was born in Cuba, moved to the U.S. at age 12, growing up in California. As a child, he experienced sleep time visits to other worlds and alien craft encounters. Those visions continue in both wake and sleep states, shaping his life and changing his calling to science, religion, and the science of life. In 2014, Robert published the first in a series of five legacy episodes to rave reviews called a must-read for every truth seeker. Legacy is set in the future, describing one man's incredible journey through several lifetimes as far back as a million years. Those blenders, the triumphs, the many worlds and places where those experiences took place that one man, Robert Maxim, back with us on This Week in America. Robert, welcome back to the program. It is always fun to have you with us. Thank you for having me on the show, Rick. We are going to uh, challenge some listeners and viewers on the program today. We've got a lot of listener questions, a bunch. We'll never get to all of them probably, but we'll, uh, we'll do the best we can. If you would like to, to get a hold of Robert and, and ask a question, you can go to uh, our website thisweekinamerica.us and hit the, uh, the email there or go directly to Robert's website, which is rgaten, G-A-E-T-A-N.com. You can look on directly to that website by going to ours. Uh, are you ready to start? We've got a bunch of them here, and they're going to challenge you before the program's over with today. Are you up to the challenge, sir? Uh, I was born ready. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Out of the womb, answering questions. I like that. Question right. number one. Are you a religious man? Do you go to church? Well, I am invited to many places of worship uh, events and spend time with many acquaintances there. However, when I go, I practice strict doctrinal respect by sticking to church beliefs, and I don't dare share anything else. Uh, I walk a very tight line with my uh, with what it is that I express. Still, I choose not to follow chartered institutions or doctrines, basically for these reasons. There are some 43,000 Christian organizations in the world, and Obviously, uh, I can't value or pit one against the other. In much the same way, uh, I will not take sides, for example, in a debate or a war by wishing some brothers to lay down their lives and others to live. And I never look at people either as good or bad, not even in, in a movie. Uh, since world, since the, world, the word religion means particular faith system, isn't that in itself a division? In God's kingdom, there is no division, belief or partiality, only complete knowing and honesty. For these reasons, while I respect all beliefs, I only tie myself to original works in science, not any man's system. I am friends with everyone, I allow everyone. But during my visits, where insult may be assumed, I, I keep silent. Uh, if we are truly God-fearing and neighbor-loving, we, we must all demonstrate an exceptional, non-divisive ability to be our brother's keeper. And that includes taming this, this device, the lip. The, yes. <laughs> and, and as Jesus said once, do you love me? His response was, feed my sheep. In other words, don't divide them apart. At least I try. And it has to be difficult to do that. And that's a, a very honest answer to that first question. The second one continues with, with a religious theme. We talk on here uh, but often about what happens at the time of death, if there is a death. And uh, a listener, this is the, the email. You are engaging in blasphemy. The Bible teaches, really? uh, that's what he says, you're, you're, and he has it spelled correctly, too. You were engaging in blasphemy. The Bible teaches at death, man's body, which is mortal, decays and returns to dust. His spirit and soul continue on in either heaven or hell. Reincarnation is contradicted by Scripture. He's quoting Hebrews 9.27, and oh. just as people are appointed to die once and then face judgment, 
We die only once, and then we are judged by God. So he takes issue with this whole thing of reincarnation that uh, biblically he feels that that's not what happens. Our, our soul is sent off to one of two places, I guess three if you count purgatory in there, and, and, and that's what happens. It doesn't live on with, with someone else. See what I mean? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, <laughs> but a little bit of knowledge is so dangerous. Uh, and sometimes it makes people think, even though they go to college and they study divinity, they think they know it all. Uh, the listener doesn't realize he just offended 4.5 billion people, theologians and researchers, that not only believe but confirm reincarnation. 4.5 billion. That's twice. That's twice the number of Christians in the world. Now, that's not to mention trillions upon trillions of aliens that live by it and have told us so. You can't block the sky with the tip of your pinky or bring its darkness, bring about its darkness when others admire the light. Um, here's the situation, Rick. Millions of people ignore Middle Eastern religious history and know not what they do to others when they oppose reincarnation. First of all, the Middle East was a reincarnation hotbed for thousands of years. It was so until Constantine hunted down and purged all that practiced, practiced it in order to sell and unify a religion that favored Greek, Roman, uh, mythoistic pagan beliefs. And if you remember my radio show on Pistis, Aphrodite, Apollo, Zeus, and Cronus, uh, and how their roles taint today's doctrines, that was, what, two or three radio shows ago? I believe so, yes. Yeah, well, thousands of incriminating manuscripts and individuals, thousands, in the last 2,000 years were either persecuted or vanquished. Others were burned and tortured to keep them silent. You, you remember the Inquisition? Yes. Well, it's still going on in more subtle ways by means of threatening statements like the one just made. Now, don't forget, past life roles influence what we support or oppose today. So many individuals that have these uh, contrary beliefs and, and, and they follow... Uh, certain certain documents, they have no idea they are repeating their past. Now, many manuscripts did survive persecution, and I'll name a few of them. Uh, Sohar, Kabbalah, Talmud, especially the Talmud, the Mishnah, Pharisee beliefs, uh, Egyptian writings, um, even Hebrew, Tav, and Gimel letters are built right into the alphabet. You can't get rid of them. Uh, Greek Orphism, Koran, uh, Gnostics, Aryans, Celts, Gauls, uh, Germanic tribes. How about the Essenes? They all taught reincarnation. And by the way, this should come as no surprise that Jesus and John the Baptist were Essenes. Now, so you have the Old Testament. You have Jesus. You have church fathers like Clement, who, by the way, was first generation from disciple Mark. And how about Origen, who was second generation from Apostle Mark? And many others that confirm reincarnation. So the whole tree from the disciples all the way up to Origen, and even further, confirm reincarnation, and also confirm which books were authentic. This is referenced in neutral theological studies. So, end of discussion. If the listener mentions his belief to streams of modern Judaism, he's going to be scorned out of his mind. How can you actually argue with the original language and writers of the Bible? Did Jesus disqualify the Old Testament by saying, when he said that it spoke of him? No. Is the New Testament legitimately represented and translated? No. Now let's talk about the book of Hebrews. Who wrote it? Everybody thinks that Paul wrote it, but no. It was apocryphal until 
the writers of the King James Version said, oh, Paul wrote it. So now everybody thinks that Paul did. But if you read the writings of the forefather Eusebius, he clearly says, Paul did not write it. So are, are you now seeing the, the conflict here between what somebody said early on and what, what somebody says now? How can anybody lend lips ignoring these facts? So that's why I say always, always check out, <laughs> check out the car facts. Yes, yes. You know, and you, o- you obviously it. have done that. I mean, you have mm-hmm. done extensive research into this. Did your opinion change as because of the, the extensive nature of the research that you did? I have to admit, I was studying theology, and I have that background. Uh, so from the beginning, I have always tried to dig up the car facts. As I never try to take anything on face value or relegate scrutiny to any man's opinion or words without first doing a background check. Uh, now, something else, Rick, it's definitely not okay in God's book. It's not okay to steamroll, to scare, to accuse or insult others into submission in order to earn people for God. That's not what God wants. Truth needs no threat to be correct or force in order to earn your brownie points. Truth stands on its own, but corrupts the moment that you interfere. Now, to add insult to injury, for some, no evidence is ever good enough. How many people do I talk to? Remember the last show I was saying, I offer them evidence and they're holding onto this book. And what they say is, well, well, the evidence is the devil. Uh, Uh, Yes, yes. I I don't need it for salvation. Come on. you got to be kidding me. There goes God's original word. It's right here, down the drain, forfeited to a multi-level stifling machine, working for thousands of years to rid implicating evidence into oblivion. His true word is very simple. And it fits into everyone's capacity budget. And it should not be ignored. And it starts with, number one, respect. Number two, honesty. And number three, number three, very important, a true understanding of just what love is. And as the golden rule says, you have to love yourself as if others. And if you cannot love yourself, how can you love others? And if you don't love others, how can you love God? It all starts with you. You have to respect yourself. You have to be honest with yourself. And you have to love yourself. And when you practice it with yourself, then you can export it to others. You can't, you can't just go out and say, well, it says right here, having no clue what the history of the religion is. You have no clue what the history of the books are. You have no clue whether the translation is correct, who changed what, who said what, who decided what. They have no idea. So come on, people, let's get back to the classroom. Well, you know, let's, one thing that's think up. <laughs> well, that uh, it's come, it hit me hard as we've gone through all of these programs and talked about questions basically like this is the the vastness of what we call religion, the number of different uh, different forms of religion, the different interpretations. It, it's just the uh, uh, the different translations. You can take a word and parse it and come up with three or four different uh, definitions that, that really change the, your entire outlook. So that was uh, uh, an interesting uh, and fact-based answer to that question. And um, uh, I hope the, the listener is... Uh, uh, on uh, listening or, or online to, to get this program, and then we'll, we'll respond to that. But that was, uh, are you okay now? Are you, I took a lot of energy out of you, I think, on that, on that question. We're going to continue. This is something with reincarnation, but it's interesting because we talk about reincarnation and we talk about past lives. Are they the same? Yes, they are. Uh, reincarnation is the continuation of consciousness from a past life on to the next life. The next time you come back, say in a hundred years or so, you would have reincarnated at that time. 
and the life that you have now will be in the past to you. So that's kind of the relationship be, between reincarnation coming back and a past life being a life that you led. So, yes, there is a relationship between the two. Okay, that's very good and very simple to answer that one. And uh, we'll move on. We've got so many questions, that, and we will again when the program is over. And we'd love to have yours in the uh, in the waiting list. You can get a hold of us by going to thisweekinamerica.us uh, comment section there or get a hold of Robert at his website, rgaten, G-A-E-T-A-N dot com. Another website that's got a great deal of information that uh, Robert is, is part of as well is uneriusunited.com. By going to our website, you can link on directly. Robert and Maxim, our guest in the program, Legacy Series is, is the basis for, for what we talked about and how these programs started several years ago. Uh, another question here, how do uh, you become aware, how did you become aware that you are a visionary of past lives? And I assume that when did you realize this is not just an idle, random dream, this really is something of, of substance that I just went through? Well, it wasn't until I was 18, and it hit me all of a sudden. So I went from not, I, I don't want to say not believing in, but not knowing such thing existed as reincarnation into all of a sudden, boom, I see one. And at, at that point... Uh, I am very alarmed. Uh, and over the coming days in relating myself with other individuals, because I started my search, I realized, you know, everyone is aware, but don't know it because either they don't know it exists or they don't have evidence or, or they don't have anyone to relate to it. And this is not something that um, is it's a fake mental thing that you're getting into this, this group think uh, type deal or I imagination. I tell you, uh, I didn't know. And my higher self basically said, okay, now you will know. Bam, there it is. And what I saw was so vivid. I was literally there. It was like time disappeared and I was there. So uh, if anybody didn't know, didn't understand, didn't know where to go to, I went to it. So I understand what everybody is going to. Uh, the moment you realize that you are the product of past events in present and prior lives and as lessons learned, then you start to understand your thoughts and past actions. Every thought is influenced by the past. Every thought, even, even past actions in this life. So all of that has to be sorted out. If we watch our thoughts and learn their meaning and source, we envision the past. Now, for those that are still in that transition where they think that there is some sort of contradiction between a belief and reincarnation. Just look at it this way. It's a very small section of existing writer, uh, writings that don't say it outright, that it doesn't exist. They just phrase it in such a way that makes you imagine it does not. And I can say that 90 to 95% of the Bible says it does. And it's how you translate it and how you reword it that that makes it makes you feel like contradicting you know paul uh, rick you've been in in the in the news industry for for the longest time and you know that you don't have to say what you mean you have to you can say specific phrases and words without saying what you mean and cause a reaction in other people to then believe what you meant that they didn't want to say yeah, exactly I, yes you know, this is very common. And the, a lot of the translations are doing that. And don't forget, don't forget, for 2,000 years, this has been snuffed out. And hopefully what I said a few minutes ago will, will lead you to realize just what the problem is. I'm not saying that any of the teachings are, are I don't want to say the word wrong. There's no such thing as wrong. But... Uh, what, what I'm saying is you have to dig a little deeper. You must understand. And then the whole package, the whole package would come to light. It's, that's what you're missing. 
I'm looking at this question again. I changed the tense on that. It says, uh, I'm thinking it was, how did you become aware? I think the question was, how do you become aware? Someone possibly going through this. And I think you answered that in, in what you went through back when you were 18. And I'm taking from what you're saying, the first step in this is recognition that something special is going on. When someone realizes that, where do they turn? Is Unarius United a good place, a community to get started so they can sort of enhance and develop this experience? Right. It's not about group think or group imaginatum. No, it's all about uh, researching and finding out for yourself that it is true. Uh, there is no such thing as imagination. There is no such thing as groupthink. It's all about a reality that you have not become aware of. And just like when you were a kid and you looked up in the sky and you saw a, a blue and a back and a black background with stars, you know, if you were young enough, you figure, well, that's the end of my universe. That's where it ends. It's up there in the clouds. That's what people thought in the 1600s, right? Yes. Uh, there's, we're inside of a cave, and you look up, and that's the end. And when you b were, began to see scientific shows that shows, no, there's more. You know, there's all this distances beyond. Uh, there's pictures of galaxies, things that you cannot see with your eye. Did you b believe that, or did you think, you know, I better, I better check into this. Uh, this is not imagination. This is reality. And somebody has already found this out. Uh, up there, that's not the end. It keeps going. And you have this great awakening. Well, that's what happened to me when I realized there is such a thing as past life. And all of these things I've seen for the past 18 years since I was a baby, you know, it was not a dream. It was not an imagination. How can a baby imagine having lived before? seeing pictures of being in, in New York City. Uh, and I can tell you what the streets were. Uh, it was a, uh, in Cuba, we used to call it uh, ten, 10 cents. That's what we call the store. But in the U.S., it was called uh, uh, Woolworth. Mm, okay, so you remember sure. that? Sure. You remember the Woolworth store? Yep. Well, I, I saw one, and I could, I could tell you exactly where it was. It was a 1936 Chevy uh, coming down the street. It was no stoplights. And I've actually found a place. So this is 1936, and I was in New York City. Wow. So, uh, I mean, somebody is two, two years old. Come on, you're going to dream of that? Yes. <laughs> Please. But I saw all of that, and I threw it in the garbage, Rick, because I didn't know. I didn't understand. I did not tie, tie the dots. So when it was explained to me, and, and when I saw firsthand evidence, uh, I, I finally dropped the curtain. And I said, oh, okay, now, look at these hundreds, thousands, thousands of visions I've had over, over, over and dreams I've had over, over my, my youth. That's what it was. So it at that point, it started to make sense for you. In a snap, it all came together. And it basically is a process of self-realization. It's not somebody talking you into something they want you to believe. You needed to believe this yourself before you could accept it. That's right, and that's why I say, uh, if it said so, or if he said so, doesn't work for me. I have to have evidence. Interesting. Robert Gaten, our guest on the program, uh, that's the website, rgaten, G-A-E-T-A-N.com. Robert Maxim is the actual guest on the program. The book is the Legacy Series. Getting too caught up in what we're talking about here. How do you really know you had past lives? Are you relying solely on dreams? Well, I think a touch base a little bit of on that uh, a couple of seconds ago. Again, I wasn't aware of clear for years until I saw it. And I disciplined my feelings, which were voices from the past. See, I don't do or say things because I feel like it or because I'm free to do so as I please. No. The past influences consciousness and consciousness is your switchboard, the decision maker. And we humans down here, for the most part, just listen and do whatever the lower self, the past, tells us to do. So think of yourself as a puppet. And the lower self, the guy pulling the strings, is up here, you know, moving your legs, moving your arms, whatever. Once you know that, you start to pull back and realize that, no, it's not you who really wants to do things as it pleases. 
It's someone else. It's your past whispering in your ear, do it. Do it. So who's the boss? You or it? And that's the, the continuing role of, of past lives. Uh, another question, and I think we, we've mm-hmm. touched on this as well. How do you know who you were in the past? And I'm assuming you know because of the visions that you have, the dreams that you have. Is that correct? It, that is correct. But, you know, clarity is important because clarity helps you sort things out better. If you don't understand your emotions, you cannot gain clarity. And that and obtaining that clarity is it's a discipline. So you cannot launch yourself to figure out, well, I had this dream and I dreamed that I was in a castle and, uh, you know, I was wearing sneakers and and a beanie hat. In a, in a 1400, you know, in a 1400 castle uh, with a cell phone, you know, come on, you know, that's what I mean about some dreams that get mixed up with present events because your mind is not trained, your mind is not disciplined. So you have to start that discipline to write it down. And as the day goes along, you have to listen to your thoughts and work them out, find out what they are. Well, well, I went a minute, wait a minute. I wanted to get mad at this individual. Why? Well, he said this. Well, why did that make me upset? Why does this subject make me upset? Am I afraid for my life? Why am I afraid for my life? What was it about? What keyword? Oh, sword. He said sword. Sword make me afraid. Of, why? Was I killed by a sword? Did I kill somebody with a sword? You know, that's where you start analyzing, objectifying. You have to start objectifying and first know your feelings. And then as, as you objectify, these thoughts just begin to come in and come in and come in and come in and come in. Before you know it, you have a ton of details. You're not after finding out what your past was. You're finding out what the, what the message of the past or, or shall we say the language of the past is and write it down. Once you sort this out and you've gone through this process, which to me, honestly, Rick, it took me years. Years. I was really messed up. <laughs> uh, and I, I finally got to the point where I could start writing legacy. And because it was a lot more clear and what I was seeing was very direct. No cell phones in, in Atlantis, you know, no sneakers in Lemuria. Yes. Uh, I was not driving a, a, a 1989 Ford Galaxy down on Atlantean Avenue anymore. I mean, it was very clear. There was no, no other impacts. And, and that's, I'm, I'm, I'm mentioning it in that way so people get a little better idea of what happens with a lot of our dreams and how we cloud them. Yes, and I think what you're saying is, is what you don't accept and people should not accept something at face value. There's some intellectualization that goes into this process and it may not happen overnight. I mean, you're saying that it took you years to really sort out something that happened even, even 20 years ago in your life. Right. That is correct. Robert Maxim, our guest on the program. The website is thisweekinamerica.us. You can submit a question for, for Robert there or his website, rgaten, G-A-E-T-A-N dot com. Let's go back to the person with the, with the strings now and the, the impact past lives have on current lives. The question is, are my phobias based on past lives? Hmm. I would say both directly and indirectly. Now, you can also assume mental energies from others that you're in contact with or association with and be subject to their hang-ups as well. So, again, you have to objectify. You have to be alert. So consider also physical imbalances, uh, dietary issues, health issues. But that, too, is the product of the past. You were led to that condition. You were led to eat that food. You were led to go outside in the cold without wearing a beanie. Well, all those things are caused by, by past association. So you have to get to the why and then the what. Then so everything. just knowing that past lives uh, may have an impact on current phobias, that's part one. Part two is finding out why that, that's the case and the, the implications it has now in the current life. That is correct. And like we said in the last show, past lives matter. Uh, yes, I got my T-shirt made for that, too. So that uh, and we'll be selling those online here be- before long. Uh, interesting uh, question, once again, from a listener. How will you evolve in future lives, do you think? And do you necessarily evolve from one life to another? I added that at the end. 
uh, it's entirely up to you. Uh, I hope I'm not turning back into an into some monkey or ape anytime soon. Uh, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but you know the way that people act sometimes and and trust and and believe in things, you know, it makes you wonder uh, if we're not going backwards sometimes. Uh, my future is set uh, by what I do today. So each minute is precious. Each each moment we reinforce a positive alignment with our higher self. It's like buying life insurance for our next lives. Tune constantly to your higher self and do its bidding. Don't give in to emotions, fear, anger, threats. And don't get defensive or try to settle the score with anybody without higher guidance. That's how you evolve. That's what beings throughout the universe do, and that's the norm. We are the ones that choose to be abnormal and reactionary. So you will be a better person in, in the next, in the next life. Working on it. Yeah. I hope yeah. So. <laughs> it's interesting. The, the transformation that's made and the evolution over the period of time. And, and speaking of time, it's going by way too quickly as it always does. Let's see if we can get this yeah. one in. How many other worlds have you experienced how many lifetimes? And to me, an interesting question is, do you know when it began for you? I mean, can you go back to where there was a beginning of, of your soul? Well, that I have seen at least a million years. Uh, it's been countless lives. Uh, over more than 30 visions of Atlantis and Lemuria combined, uh, as far as other worlds, uh, Orion, Sagittarius, Alpha Centauri recently, Venus, that was the first one. Mars, Saturn, those just a few that come to mind, but uh, there are worlds that I don't even know where they are that I have seen, even outside of this galaxy. Uh, and I'm putting those into episode three right now, and I will be in the, uh, in the large uh, Magellan cloud. I'm thinking as we're talking that legacy really answers a lot of these questions and you can get information on legacy at Robert's website, rgaeton.com. Of course, it's available at Amazon and Barnes and Noble and get information there as well and look forward to, to future episodes of that. Uh, a few minutes left here. A question, and we really don't have time, I don't think, to do it justice and I'll tease it for the next program and they'll come back for a few minutes. Are aliens able to harm or help us, especially with medical or technological advancements? I don't think we can do that in three, four minutes, so we'll hold that off and, and talk, about yeah. that, talk about that next time. But what I find mm -hmm. interesting with, with the questions and, and the answers to the questions, you're really still evolving, aren't you? You're still learning. It's not like I've got all of the answers. I'm going to sit back and just enjoy life now. I, I get the impression maybe every day you're finding out something different. Do we ever stop learning in school? Uh, even, uh, I can't give away my age, <clears throat> I'm sorry, <laughs> but in my, uh, even in my branch of work, I am every day, I am having to learn something new in order to remain employable. And so it is with, with people. They have to be in school every moment of their life in order to continue progressing. There is no end. Infinity is just that. If you point your finger at the end of infinity, then it's not infinite anymore, is it? So God is infinite. And you will never get to the point where you stop evolving or stop, uh, shall we say, progressing, learning. Uh, there is so much to learn about God and infinity. I cannot even begin to fathom uh, the endlessness of it. Uh, that's why we're here. Uh, we we are here to bring down just a little tidbit that we learned on on the inner before incarnating, so that we can instruct this basement level of our soul uh, with a little bit of knowledge, and we have to come back and come back and come back and slowly elevate it, elevate it, elevate it, elevate it, until we no longer have to be here. That is the purpose of life, and even that basement will continue to evolve in higher dimensions and uh, in other celestial kingdoms. It, uh, there, there's no end for it. There's no end to the soul. There's no end to infinity. Learning is love. 
So if you want to learn more about love, you have to understand learning. And when you understand learning, you understand how you have to allow others to, to express, to develop, to have whatever opinion they have. Never accuse them. Never zap them with, with uh, criticism or accusations. Let them be. Let them express. Do unto others how you would like done unto you. Because they are students just as much as you are. And that's why I said, first, learn to love yourself, to allow yourself to, to understand and to learn. Then you will understand what, how love and how learning applies to everyone else. If God allows people to develop and have the level of understanding that they have without ending their life, what right have you to interfere with them and, and cause the end of their life? Or even interfere or tell them that they're wrong. If God doesn't do it, what right have we? That's how we learn. That's how we progress. And once we understand that, we're just beginning to cross the, the edge over to the point where we're now understanding God. And we're beginning to really, shall we say, obey Him or flow with Him and become part of infinity. We cannot be a partner of God if we accuse, maim, or force anyone. That is not godly. So let's take that home and let's put it to practice. That is the number one rule of discipline. And if anybody wants to get into reincarnation and find out, guess what? That is lesson number one. That is reincarnation 101 right there. Do not interfere. Do not hate. Do not force. Do not do anything to your brother or sister to persuade them away from where they are. If they ask questions, answer. But be very careful. Never, ever interfere with them. And on that question that we're going to leave for, for next time, whether they're able to harm or help, yes. they should not. They should not interfere with us in any way. And if they do, guess what? Like, like uh, Jesus said, if your hand offends you, you know, cut it off, cast it away. It's better that you lose your hand than lose your soul. Interesting. So, Boy, we're going to have a fun discussion the next time. That's just the, where we're going to start. We've got more questions uh, left over from today. Surprise, <laughs> that happens every time. And we're uh, uh, welcoming uh, new questions. So give us a, uh, uh, a shoot off an email to us. I'll go through everything again. You're listening to This Week in America. Our website is uh, thisweekinamerica.us. You can go there, submit a question that I will pass along to uh, to Robert, and we will get to on a subsequent program. You can go to uh, Robert's own website, which is rgaetan.com, and you can send an email to Robert directly by going that way. A lot of the information we talk about is available on the website unariusunited.com. That's U-N-A-R-I-U-S, unariusunited.com. We're talking about the Legacy Series by our guest on the program, Robert Maxim, M-A-X-X-I-M. That's available at Robert's website, also Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and you can, again, link on to that by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. We close, uh, we're talking about love and respect. That's where we started the program as we got into the, uh, the religious discussion. Robert, intense, provoking as always. I really enjoy having you on the program. Uh, <laughs> we cover a lot of ground, learn a lot. We're going to uh, go through and sort of uh, go back and reassess what we talked about in today's program. And we'll do it again here in, in a few weeks. Thank you for being with us on the program. My pleasure, and thanks for the listeners to be so so candid, open, and uh, and free to consider something that may be entirely new to them. But please, do not fight it off, and don't believe me. Go find it for yourself. It's out there if you want it. And if you have any questions, submit them to us, and we will get to them on the program. You're listening to This Week in America, the place to go to submit your questions. You can go to Robert's website, as I mentioned, or to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. We're back on today's program after we take a break for these important messages. Stay tuned. We're coming right back. <laughs> 